Well, hello there. Hello. I know. Finally, I'm back to do another video. That's right. This is Mr. War. I know it may not sound like me, but it is I. Now, hey, let's get got started, guys. And also, this is from the narrative. Mr. War, you really need to stay focused this time. Okay. Hey, I'm going to do my best. Okay, let's get you out of the way. Voila. Let's start with this. Today's lessons is all about. Oh, my goodness. We're looking at this. Common Core State Standards, that's what that little funny CCSS stands for. Fifth grade, numbers in base 10. B, I'm not sure what that stands for, but it's the seventh part of that Common Core Standard. It says that you need to add, subtract, multiply, and divide decimals, two hundredths, using concrete models or drawings and strategies based on place value. Okay, isn't that wonderful? Let's make this uh, a little bit simple. My objective from that and what we're going to be focusing on today is that students will be able to multiply decimals and whole numbers by decimals and whole numbers by using an area model. That sounds kind of funny, but that is what we're doing. So you'll see very soon. And of course, we have that language objective, which is so important. The words that we use to describe the process. We're going to be multiplying factors in an area model. And this is completed by, and this is a step-by-step -step process, and we're going to take a look at that as well. Okay, moving on to page two. Ta -da. All right, here we go, and we're moving on. So, what do we have here? Oh, this looks like something straight from second grade. I'm sorry, maybe it was first grade. No, maybe third. Hey, it was a little while ago. It was when we used these models, such as this one here, to show that, ooh, we have, these are hundreds, because if you were to count all those little tiny cute little squares, you would have 100. Therefore, we would teach you those are hundreds. And this here, obviously, these are tens. And there's 10 tens in one of those hundreds. And of course, we have these little ones. And so if we were to write this number, we would actually write this number. Let me get my little pan. And we would say that that would be 135. 135, okay? However, we're not doing second grade math, guys. Hello, we're moving on to fifth grade. So therefore, we're going to represent those same base 10 blocks in a whole new way. That's right. We're not going to call him Mr. 100 anymore. We're going to just call him as like a 1. So we're going to say that this one whole 10 by 10 grid would equal 1. Therefore, we would call these, rename these as tenths, not tens, but tenths because ten of these would make up that one hole. Like you had a big, huge candy bar and you're breaking up into pieces. Okay, and then finally, that would mean those little tiny squares making up each tenth would equal one hundredth. Okay, so this is how we're going to rename them for this activity. Okay, let's move on. Page four, coming on down. So here's our problem. Oh my goodness. We have two and eight tenths times three and one tenth. Okay. Well, what I like to do first, I like to start with a little estimate sometimes. It makes things just a little bit more exciting. Let's use purple. See, 2.8 is really just three, right? So we could say three, rounded, times, and then 3.1, what do you know, is also very, very close to three. So we just have three times three, which means that our answer, our estimate, should be right around 9. Okay, well, let's, see if, let's find out if that's what occurs here for this problem. First, I'm going to represent the 2 and 8 tenths. As you can see, as I locate over here, follow the purple arrow. All right. So what I did is I thought of this going up and down. Okay, so we have one here. Let me go ahead and get my magic pen. Magic! Magic pen. We have one here, we have two here, that represents that two. I'm going to look at here, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. That represents the eight tenths, okay? So two and eight tenths. I'm showing this in a vertical fashion. Does that make sense to you? I surely hope so because, I'm sorry guys, I have to move on. This is a math video. <laughs> so I'm going to move on to the next slide here, and if we will come down here, you can see that I've done some more work. So now I have little arrows representing that this is the two and eight tenths going vertically across. Okay, but now I need to represent this other one. Voila, ding. Oh, by the way, since I have this out. 
Okay, so now I'm going to represent the 3 and 1 tenth. I'm going to represent going horizontally, meaning that's 1, 2, see those squares? 3, and look way down here at the very bottom, is the 1 tenth. So we, let me go ahead and get a pen that might help you understand this even a little bit better. So right here we have 0 0.1. That's that amount. Remember this here? This is the 0 0.1. Eight, okay, of these numbers. Now this is where it can get kind of confusing because we have this overlap going on, okay? So that's why I use two different colors here. If you noticed, the blue here, okay, is that, I was trying to show that right there going across. So, you know, you could have blue up there, this line here, blue thinking this is one, this is two, this is three. And then of course the other color is the 2.8. I guess I should have made him blue as well. Okay, you get the idea. Let's go to the next slide. So now, I think I want this slide. So now we have actually, actually we have the same thing. So what I'm going to do here is, I think I scooted it over a little bit to give me some more room here. So we're going to go take this piece by piece. So this is the part where it's really important that you guys focus, okay? Um, because I'm going to be um, doing that. That's an N, by the way. So, you know, like Nancy. Anyway, so um, what I'm going to first do is I'm going to first represent, let me get my other color. We'll do red. Red shows up really nice. So, so we have all this overlapping here. If you notice, the 8 tenths is going up and down vertically. And the 1 tenth here, which is that one lone tenth, is going horizontally. Well, this is where they crisscross right here. The 8 tenths and the white, the, uh, the, and the, the 1 tenth, they crisscross right here, giving us one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight hundredths. Because remember, those are those little tiny cubes that were so cute. So let's go ahead and put 0 0.8 times, because that's what's overlapped, 0 0.1. I'm doing this so slow as not to cross. Giving us what? That's right, I heard you guys, 0 0.08. Don't fall in the trap of trying to put 0.8. It's, it's a, we have two decimal places here. And look, at we have 800s, as you can see here. The next one that we have here is where the two, now remember the two holes? Remember, they're going vertically, here and here. I'll get my magic pen and show you. But this is the one hole here. Here's the other hole here. That's two, and it's crisscrossing with this one-tenth that was at the bottom. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to go ahead and take a look at that. So now we're going to go ahead and circle the two holes times the one-tenth. So I'm going to put 0 0.1 times the two holes giving us. And look, we don't even have to do the math. All we have to do is just look down here. Ah, it gives us two tenths. Okay, 0 0.2. All right. So far, so good. Now let's come over here. If we look at this one here, we have the 8 tenths being multiplied by the three holes. See, the three holes were right here. Remember, 1, 2, 3 going to going across horizontally was what that three was. Okay, there's a big three rectangles. And then we also had the tenths going vertically here. So what I'm gonna do is get my pen and we're gonna go ahead and circle that and take a look at that. See what's happening. And we have, whoa, right here. See that, not the best circle in the world, but you get the idea. So now this time around, we have eight tenths and this eight tenths is being multiplied by three holes. So let's go ahead and write that down. 8 tenths times 3 holes. And how many is that giving us? Well, if we look at that, the, the crisscross here with the 3 and the tenths, you can see here that we have, look, we have 8 here going across, and then we have another 8, and then we have another 8 because of the, in each section. So therefore, we have 24, if you were to count those, 24. So that is going to give us 2.4. Okay? 2.4, because it ends up giving us another hole. 8 tenths, it gives a hole. Okay? So 8 of those, because 2 more would give us one more hole. So we're ending up with 2 holes and 4 tenths. Okay? If you add all those tenths together. Now, finally, we have 2 holes times 3 holes. Okay, see, here's the two. They were going up and down. And the threes, holes were going this way. 
And look what they, look to where they crisscross right here. And I'll circle that right now in red so you can see that. And this, here it is, right here. And what do we have? One, two, three, four, five, six holes. I'm going to put two times three. And I'm, I know you're thinking, wow, but we knew that was six, Mr. War. But now we can just add all these together. So let's go ahead and do that. We'll start with six and we'll put point zero. We'll do, what do we have here? 2.4, 2.4. We have a point zero eight and we have a point two. And of course you can put zeros in all the other spots if that makes you makes it easier for you to not make a mistake adding. Now if you notice we get eight. Here we have six and then eight. So it's eight tenths I'm sorry eight and sixty eight hundredths. If we were to multiply that through we could double check our work to make sure that that's correct. Um, since we've added this in pieces and the focus here is the area model, I'm going to stop here. Now there is one more I put on the end here that you could do as like a practice on your own. There won't be a quiz on this, but this is basically the problem that I've given you. And I'm showing you maybe the different colors that you could use. First you'd want to represent one and five tenths, maybe showing that vertically and then doing the same one. Okay, and then you can work and get your answer. And uh, that actually, oh wait, forgot. I did those two. I forgot to give you this part. Yeah. Oh, what are you doing? Not that. It wants to make it so bad. Well, let's just turn like there. Does that help you out? I think that might make a word. Okay, guys, it's been really fun, but it's been like almost 12 minutes and it's time for me to go. Goodbye.